Hey guys, uh, Jaden here. Just wanted to catch y'all real quick before the video started. Uh, just wanted to let y'all know that this is indeed a part two of a previous video that I've already recorded. So if you guys have not seen that video yet, it's me fishing at the local lake for the first time. Uh, the link of it will be down in the description below. Um, in this video here, it'll be me um, cutting and cleaning the fish that I caught at that lake in the previous video. So, if, again, if you guys haven't seen that video, I highly recommend that you do. Um, again, links in the description down below. Other than that, if you guys have already seen it and you're here to see the rest of it, thanks for coming back. Um, really appreciate it. I also just want to give you guys a little heads up that uh, this is the first time I recorded myself actually cleaning and cutting up fish and the angles may not be the best um, but that's only because you know I put the camera in a weird spot but um, you can still see the fish being uh, clean and cut you know um, it's just not as you know up front as I'm sure some of y'all would like to see but I do promise that I will um, I will do better on that in future videos. But other than that, guys, thanks again for coming back. And I hope you guys enjoy uh, the video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that little bell to be notified for future videos. Now, enough talking. Let's get to cleaning up fish. All right, guys, we're back at the house. We got our catches here for the day four beautiful white bass there ready to be cut up and turned into meat as well as this beautiful channel catfish got my scale here so we're going to go ahead and uh see how much this uh, big boy weighs and then we'll measure him too so okay all right so he is at 2.72 pounds not bad not bad at all let's see uh let's see how long he is yeah, he's still a little bit alive, but he won't be for long. He's he's pretty weak right now, so. But uh, don't worry, guys. We'll uh, I'll take care of him. Oh yeah, I told y'all he was a little over two, 20 inches. He's at 21 inches. 21 inches long. That's not bad. That's pretty impressive. 21 inches doesn't beat my personal best. My personal best was a 23 inch. Um, I believe it was a blue catfish. Um, as for channel, probably, you know, it's about the same size, same length as my last big channel catfish that I caught, but yeah. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do to try and put this guy and the others, these two are still a little bit alive, I know that, but to uh, put this guy out of his misery, I'm not gonna show it, okay? I'm gonna cut that out of the video. But yeah, um, there's a certain way you have to take care of these guys. They have a really tough skull. So normally like these fishes here, I could just bonk them on the head and they'd be out for the count. But for these guys here, they have a much thicker skull. So bashing them in is not gonna be really the most humane way to do it. They do have a little bit of a weak spot right here on the top of their head. So what you do is you get a knife and you find that little notch here in the middle, right here, right about here you cut it and then you get a, like a wire or a piece of you know like a wire like this and you're supposed to stick it down in there and it goes straight into their brain and that pretty much you know you scramble a little bit and that will that'll take them out quick and easy and painless so yeah don't worry guys um like i said i'll cut it out i'll cut that part out and when i get back all five of them will be out of their misery there and i will get to cutting them up all right guys taken care of all five fish are now out um i stuck the the wire inside there he's still bleeding a bit but trust me they're all dead you see them twitching around or anything like that it just those are just nerves and stuff still kind of short circuiting or something like that you know it's kind of like you know when you disable a robot or something like that it uh it kind of twitches a bit but trust me they're gone so with that said um we're gonna go ahead and start on the white bass first and then we'll uh, finish off with the catfish. So I was wondering what's up with the wire plot, with the wire cutters here. I'm gonna explain that, it's for the catfish. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so 
First of all, when it comes to uh, cleaning any kind of fish, the first thing you want to make sure you have is a very sharp uh, filleting knife right here, or filleting knife, depending on where you are in the world, how you say it, whatever. Have a very nice sharp knife. Um, thankfully, I have this other fillet, uh, filleting knife here, um, but I'm going to use this one because I have better, I don't know why, I just like this one better. But this one has like a little uh, sharpener on the uh, sheath here, so you know but yeah definitely always make sure that you guys have a nice um well-made and sharpened knife because it makes cleaning and cutting the fish a whole lot easier there's no hassle to it so yeah all right so as i said fish have been knocked out they're gone let's uh always make sure our station is nice and clean Now, there's many different ways how a person could handle a fish and stuff, but I'm just going to fillet them because that's just the easiest thing I know how to do. So what I do is that I always come here and I make a cut right here behind the gill. Now, I'm sure, you know, other, the other fishing channels out there know how to do it, but, you know, if this is your first time seeing how to, uh, cut a, how to clean and cut a fish, well, then I'm glad that I'm here to uh, be y'all's mentor for that. So, yeah, just make a nice cut like that and then when you get to here you can feel the spine of the fish so what you're going to do is you're going to have the have the blade out like that and you're going to slowly cut your way down here and as you're cutting forward into here like that you're going to be able to feel you know the knife poking the ribs and when you feel that you know you want to use those ribs as a guide and as soon as you don't feel resistance, that means you're past the ribs. And now you can fully insert the whole knife in there. And once you get it out there, it should be about to here when it goes, once you're past the ribs, then you can really, you know, cut downwards and stuff all the way to the, through, through the tail. Now you can do it with the scales on, off, you know, whichever you feel or comfortable with me personally I don't care about the scales I'm gonna skin the fish anyway so scales will not be a problem for me. and then once you get that done you're gonna then use your knife to kind of cut over the ribs you want to run it along the top side of the ribs just like that okay and it's okay if it doesn't look pretty or pretty you know on your first try that's okay that's totally okay just the more times you do it the better you'll get a feel for it so it's been a while since I've last um, cut into a uh, white bass so I'm sure you guys can probably tell like I'm not a pro at it but you know I know how to get it done then you just cut through like that and there you go now, a lot of people like to bleed their fish, and that, that's probably a good way to make sure you get rid of all this blood that's in there. But, you know, or you can just wash it off afterwards. That's totally fine, too. But, yeah. See? All that, all that meat now is pretty much off the bone right there. And now we're going to flip it over and do it again. We're going to cut off all the fillets first on all the fish, and then we'll, then we'll skin them. Now, do you need to wear gloves? You can if you want to. You don't necessarily have to, but I do it because, you know, just in case. Oh yeah, when you reach this spot by the, past the ribs, that's when you want to angle the blade downwards and try to get it as close to the spine as possible as you're cutting down this way. 
that way you get all as much meat as you possibly can and then you just like that There you go. Nice white meat there. Again, we'll rinse it off later. I've got to get a trash bag for all this. I'll be right back. All right, so that's another thing you guys wanna make sure you have whenever you're cutting fish is that you wanna make sure you have at least a proper uh, receptacle or something like that to collect the, the cadavers and carcasses of the fish and all that. So he's pretty much all done up there. I'm sure other people will be like, oh, you can use it for bait and stuff like that. But you know what? No, nah, I, I can't afford to do that kind of stuff right now. So I, I'm just collecting the fillets is all. Now, if it was with the bluegill or green fish, yeah, I'll definitely like collect like their heads and stuff. Because I know I've caught catfish with the uh, with, uh, sunfish heads before. Especially in that spot where I caught all these fish. So... Food for thought about that. Now that we got all the fillets cut out, now we're gonna cut off uh, the, uh, the skin. So here we go. How you cut off the skin is this, you start from the tail. Now what you wanna do is you wanna kinda give yourself a little bit of grip. So you wanna cut maybe about like right here. You're gonna cut that until you get to the, you know, don't cut all the way, just cut until you feel the, the skin. Cause it's tough enough to where, you know, it's gonna fight if you try to cut through it. So just cut a little bit like that. Then tilt it like this at a bit of a 45 degree angle. Get two fingers, or as best as you can, get a good grip on that end there that's behind the knife, and just start pushing it. Like so. Make sure you're keeping the blade at an angle facing downward so that way it can truly, you know, slice up all that meat right off the skin. slide right off like butter look at that beautiful now that red line right there that's called the bloodline that's the the thing inside of fish meat that gives it that real fishy flavor to it i personally don't like it um, i know some people do prefer it if you do good on you i don't so um i'm gonna keep it as it is like that and then when i'm ready to cook it that's when i'll uh that's when I'll expertly, you know, cut it out. You know, I'll show you how to do that as well. But for right now, we're just cutting the meat off, giving it a good rinse. And that's another reason why some people say, like, they'll bleed your fish first, because at least bleeding it will help get rid of that, will help get rid of that bloodline. Um, I haven't really gotten the accustomed to bleeding a fish. I should. So that's something I'm gonna be working on with this channel, while I'm on this channel. Um, is uh, just trying to bleed the fish out so that way they'll be more prepped and ready when it comes to cutting them. But yeah, other than that, the fish is pretty much all done. And I'm gonna put it in this little bowl here, keep the meat nice and wet, nice and fresh. Here we go. Now we're just gonna do the same thing to the others all right guys so we got all the white bass meat cut up here um it's looking good like i said we're gonna cut out those uh those uh bloodlines later um but yeah after uh now that we got this done let's still go ahead and uh we'll get onto that catfish all right so here's how we take care of cutting up a catfish okay first and foremost you need to understand that this creature, because of the fact that it's a bottom dweller, um, it has a different type of body shape to it. You know, it's not as flat as those white bass were. This one's more broadened out and everything. But you can essentially still cut it up the same kind of way as any other fish. The only thing is though, is that a catfish's skin doesn't have any scales on it, you know, but we're not gonna want the skin either because that's also unedible. Um, so now that the catfish is out of its misery there um first thing we're going to do is that we're going to take these wire cutters here and we're going to clip off 
the pectoral fins and the dorsal fin. That's mainly a safety procedure there because these fins have a very tough and very pointy spike right there there and right there and we don't want to accidentally poke ourselves while we're messing around with this thing plus it does help us to handle this fish as we're cutting it because with the pectoral fins out like that we need it to be on its side kind of hard to do that when this hard fin is getting in the way so we're going to go ahead and just clip that and just rip it off like that same on the other side Same with the dorsal fin, the top fin, whichever you guys like to prefer calling it. I call it dorsal fin just because it's, you know, it's easy to recognize. All right, when you have your fish looking like that, that means you're good to go. Now, it has been a while since I've last done this, but I still remember how to do it. So again, a catfish, I'm sure you guys heard that, hear that. That's its skull right there. All this is its skull. It has some very hard bone spots right here behind the gills. So we're gonna have to kind of start going in right here. I'm sure if you guys can see this little bit right here, that's solid bone right there. So we're gonna cut the, uh, the knife around that. Like I said, use the fish's body to guide you, okay? There you go. And just like with all the other fish there, you use your knife to search for that backbone. Here it is right there. You turn it around like that, and then you just start cutting away. Very similar to how it was with the white bass. And just like with the white bass, see we're hitting up all these ribs here. Most likely, come on, there we go, there we go, and then right here, when we meet our breaching point, and we just point it out right there on that side, angle the blade down, and you just slowly work your way down the body of the fish. Even in this point, you can still use the fish's body to guide you. Oh yeah, just like that. Again, just like with the with the white bass, you use your knife to slowly. Work your way around the ribs. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Now, yeah, you can do the same thing with catfish. If you don't want to deal with all this blood and stuff, you can bleed them out just as simple as it would be with any other fish. So there we go. It's a nice, beautiful, filleted catfish meat right there. We pretty much got as much as we could right here on the spine. Trust me, when we rinse that off, that's gonna look even better. Look at that, that looks so awesome. And guess what? We have one more side. There we go guys, both sides of that catfish. Look at how juicy and big and how much meat was on that fish. I tell you guys, catfish is good eating fish. It's very delicious. So even though they are bottom feeders, I mean, as long as you cook the fish right, there shouldn't have to be anything wrong with eating. So the final part of this video is about us skinning the catfish. So I want to do one side 
again to save time but um because i still need to record me cooking it good way how to do this the exact same way as the white bass but again because their skin is different there's a way how you there's this cool way how you can do it so you do the same thing you cut off a little piece there and you put it on the 45 degree angle and just like oh dang it come on and just like before you start to cut through it now this is going to be the first time i tried this but i've seen other guys do this they say if you have catfish because of how tough their skin is you can just grab it keep the knife down and actually pull this the meat towards you in a sawing motion like this but you know what i'm not gonna I actually don't want to do that. It actually looks like it's doing it worse. So I'll just do this. I mean, if you know how to do the trick, that's great. Ah, well, that's still nice. It's still good. And there's the skin. Beautiful. They have a bloodline just like um, all the other fish right there in the middle. And again, that's what makes it taste all, you know, fishy and stuff like that. So again, y'all don't like that. Y'all go ahead and you can cut that out. A nice little hose down here. And bing, bang, boom. That's how you do catfish. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other filet, um, but I'm not gonna record that. And like I said, next time uh, we see each other, we'll be in the kitchen when I'm getting ready to cook these up. So see y'all there. All right guys, so it's been about a couple weeks now since I last cut up those fish. Um, I just never had really had the chance to really, you know, get them going but uh now i got the chance uh here we are in the kitchen uh they've been chilling in my freezer for the past couple weeks and um i took them out last night i actually ate some of them not all of them though i still have a lot of the catfish and white bass left over um that i can still cook today um but yeah i took some of them out last night ate some uh with the girlfriend you know it was pretty good uh just wanted to make sure they were still pretty good and they are um, also, um, I was going to, uh, show how to clean, um, and process, uh, those two sunfish that I caught as well in the first part of the last video. Um, I did go ahead and clean and, uh, cook one of them. It was the bluegill, the, the first one that I caught. It turned out it really was a bluegill. I just thought it was a green sunfish, you know, but it turns out it was a bluegill. It was just the, the blue behind the gills was just very faded. Um, but I still got that green sunfish, um, and I'm going to show you guys how to uh, clean and uh, process that one before we actually get to cook it, okay? Um, so once we get through all that, then we'll uh, start cooking and uh, actually see how these fish taste. So here we go. All right, guys, so we have our green sunfish here. As you all can see, he is pretty much gone. He's been in my freezer for the past couple weeks. So yeah. Um, but yeah, despite how small of a fish he is, you guys can eat these fish, especially like this. This is why, you know, there's such a huge abundance of them and why the regulations say that there's no size limit or bag limit for them. Um, because the name of the game here is that you're supposed to try and catch a whole lot of these and cook them all together but you know i only have the one instead of filleting him what we're going to do is that we're going to remove all the scales um, using this spoon here then i'm going to get a knife and i'm going to cut his head off right about right around here or like more like right here we're past this pectoral fin and right around this area and then i'm going to cut open his belly and pull out all the guts and then give him a nice good rinse over and then he'll be good and ready to cook. You can actually 
you can actually, you know, chew up on, on the, uh, on the fins here. It's nice and crispy. Like if you, like the way how I'm doing it, I'm going to be deep frying them. So yeah, the fins will be nice and crispy and everything kind of like bacon. So yeah, let's get to it. One way that I want to do this, um, I actually did it last night and it was pretty surprising how well I did this. Usually when I go to descale a fish, um, I would just get it where it is right now, get a knife or a spoon and just automatically just go ahead and go to town on and you know, scraping off the scales, but that makes a huge mess. So here's a good way how to reduce um, getting a mess. Uh, get a nice big bowl of water, and we're gonna put the fish in the bowl of water, and we're gonna take our little spoon here, and we're gonna go ahead and just start scraping away. And the scales come off pretty easily. I mean, look at that. You guys can already tell that the uh, scales are coming off. I'm sure you can see some of them floating around in the water now. Here, see, look at all that. Look at all that. All that would have been everywhere. But thanks to it being in the water, it's not so messy. Then what do you do after? You know, you just take your water and you just, you know, dump it down the sink. Or toss it outside, however you want to dispose of it. Just make sure you dispose of it properly. And yeah, look at that, see? I'm gonna get them under here. Make sure you want to get them right here close to the edges, you know. And then you gotta see there's one side with the scales and that's what it looks like with the scales off. You can basically, and the check is just run your finger up against the grain here. And if you feel any kind of like roughness or anything like that, then that means that there's still some scales there and you can just, you know, give them a good run over with a spoon. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, but uh, I'm gonna skip through that. The next bit will be with us moving on to the next part, which is cutting the head off and removing the guts. All right, guys, so we got him nice and scaled. You know, I can run my fingers and my thumb across his whole body up against his, the grain like that and not feel any kind of rough patches. Um, other little note when dealing with uh, sunfish guys, um, do be careful and be mindful of uh, the, uh, the top fins here and uh, the little pectoral fins here, as well as the, these fins right here in the back and the bottom here. Um, they do have little bitty spikes there. Um, again, not venomous, it's just they just hurt like the dickens. So, you know, just be careful of that. But yeah, it's pretty fish, nice yellowing on the tips of the fins there. But yeah, okay, so the next thing what we're gonna do is that um, we're gonna cut the head off. I got my knife right here. Check it out, pretty nice. The husk, kni husk knife uh, made in Japan, you know, pretty nice. And uh, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and position him like so. And we're gonna look for his little poop hole here. See, like right there. We're gonna take the very tip of the knife and we're gonna just Cut it open just like that. And this will be for when we take the guts out. Next thing what we're gonna do is then we're then going to position him up like so. And you're gonna get your knife and you're gonna put it right here, okay? It's literally right here. Put, put the whole knife right here on this, the back side of the head and you're gonna come down Now, you're gonna have to put a little bit of excessive force, but be careful, okay? Remember, you're dealing with knives here, so you gotta be very careful when cutting through them. There we go, just like that. And you're already gonna get through some of the guts and stuff there, see? And it helps by cutting this open, because then you pull a lot of the guts out. 
And then you just get your finger or any kind of tool, whatever, and you're gonna have to scoop them all out. So then you get that and you're just gonna go and rinse it off. I'm gonna go, let me go rinse it off. All right, so we have the head clean off. The guts have been scooped out. Fish has been pretty well cleaned up. That's basically what it should look like, just like that. Um, again, make sure you rinse it thoroughly. I'm probably gonna give it a few more rinses and stuff, but yeah, that's what it should look like. Um, now, with the head, you can either toss it in the trash or whatever. Me personally, I'm gonna keep the head and some of the guts and use it as bait. Um, I actually have the bag. This is actually with the head of the uh, bluegill that I had, that I caught also in that video. I told you guys I cooked it up last night. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the green sunfish's head here in the bag. I'm gonna use that for baits. Believe it or not, they actually make pretty good catfish bait. So I'm gonna put it like that, toss it in the freezer, and wait until uh, my next outing. And hopefully we can catch ourselves a good catfish with it. That's how you uh, clean and cut a sunfish. Um, one that's too small to be filleted. And trust me guys, I know they get a lot bigger than this. I do, but hey, you know, there's no bag limit, no size limit, and they taste pretty good, so I'm taking it, <laughs> you know? I'm taking what I can get. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this guy off, and then we'll move straight on to cooking the, uh, the white bass, the catfish, and this little guy, all right? Um, see ya. All right, guys, so we have our green sunfish. We have <clears throat> two fillets of the white bass. I think both of these came from the uh, from the bigger one that I caught, the one with the eggs. And then here's half a uh, fillet from the catfish. So we got ourselves uh, quite a nice little uh, course here. So as I said earlier in the video, I was going to show you guys how to expertly um, cut out these, uh, these bloodlines here because that is what gives fish that very fishy taste that a lot of people don't like. So bear in mind, um, that is all, you know, y'all's perspective of it. I'm going to go ahead and put him to the side for a bit, put him in a little bowl of water to chill out in. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So what you're gonna wanna do is that you're going to want to um, come at this thing kind of at an angle on each side, kind of like make like a wedge, you know, cut like a little wedge on the inside there, right? So um, I don't have a filleting knife with me. I left that at my, uh, my folks' home, but this knife works pretty well as well. I used it to cook the fish last night, so yeah. Um, again, do be careful when dealing with knives, guys. We don't want to have an accident. So go ahead and get a nice little cut right there. Again, you're coming at it at an angle like so. And then once you get a good bit in through there you can grab it by the end here by the tip there and you're gonna go ahead and just start cutting at it right underneath it and pulling on that tip there as you're going And again, this is only if you really don't like eating fish with the bloodline, okay? So if you are perfectly fine with the bloodline, then you don't have to do any of this and you guys can just skip straight to when I start cooking the fish. But I personally do not like the bloodline. I don't like that really fishy taste. And boom, 
there you have it. That's the bloodline. We're not going to eat that. Put it off to the side. I'm going to throw these guys in a little bowl of water with the sunfish. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to these guys. All the bloodlines have been cut off. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy in half too. Right down the middle. Booyah. That is our catfish, and that is what we're going to cook up. All right, so got a little bowl here, got the egg, here we go. Oh, well, you guys didn't know you could crack an egg like that and not get any kind of uh, shells in there? <laughs> well, funny for that happening, I just found that out about a week ago. <laughs> Learn something new every day. All right. Eggs have been whipped up. Now to uh, bust out the ingredients for my little uh, batter season. So I like to put them in a little Tupperware container, kind of like this. First thing we're gonna put in there is a few little scoops of flour. One scoop will be okay. We're not gonna be cooking that much, so yeah. One, I used um, one fourth cup of uh, flour right there. I'm not gonna really give good precise measurements here, guys. So I just do it as I do. I'm no professional chef or anything, so don't take a lot of cooking advice from me. But I mean, I do know how to cook some stuff, and I do know how to cook these fish because this is the same uh, stuff that. Uh, my girlfriend and I ate last night, and as you can see, I am still alive. <laughs> That's the most important thing when it comes to cooking. If you're still alive after you've eaten it, then that basically means you did a pretty good job. Next thing I'm going to do is put in some uh, organic cornmeal. that much right there stir that up a little bit like that then I'm gonna get some panko crumbs some panko bread crumbs just one little do over like that get some nice crispiness to it the seasoning that I use um, is this thing called uh, Tony Chatchers. Um, so if you guys can find this at like an Albertsons or any kind of local market that you guys go to, you know, hopefully it's there. I like this flavor. Um, it's great for blackening and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty good. Got a little bit of a salty kind of taste to it, but I mean, I like it. It's not too spicy. I don't really like a lot of spice to some of my stuff, but you know, this one, this one hits the spot just right. Not sponsored by the way. Then the final little touch, uh, some thyme leaves. They really bring out a nice little flavor and they smell great. I'm going to put a little lid on the container. Good shake. And voila, there we have it. So I'm then going to go ahead and uh, 
take you all over to the stove. And from there, you can see how I go ahead and how I dip them in and get them all ready to go. All right, guys. So I just turned the stove on. Um, got it on high, medium heat right now. I'm gonna go ahead and use just regular vegetable oil. Get in here. Probably pour over the rest of the whole thing in there, yeah. <clears throat> there we go. And we're gonna let that heat up for a bit. As we let that heat up right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take our fish and I'm gonna put them in the uh, <clears throat> little egg, little egg and uh, dry batter here that we made. I'm put the catfish in there first. And use some chopsticks, kind of just twirl them around in there. Now the egg batter will help the fish get all nice and uh, sticky and stuff, and it'll help with uh, getting the uh, the batter uh, to stick to the meat. Now you can use all sorts of different other ways to do this. In fact, you don't even have to use egg. Some mostly it will stick on there just fine, but you know the egg just helps with cooking it and it gives it a nice little flavor um, as well. So yeah, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and. That guy right in there. Pop that one in there. Give yeah, some nice little shakes. Be very gentle when you're shaking it around, guys, okay? You don't want to make a whole lot of mess. Or you can just grab them and just toss them around yourself by hand, you know, if you guys don't mind getting your hands all messy, you know, but, you know, whatever floats your boat. All right, here we go, putting in the first catfish. And the second one. Also be very careful, guys, that stuff does boil pretty hot. I can just heat down just a little bit. really getting it going. Oh, it's already smelling really good guys. And you can see because thanks to that egg, all those seasonings and stuff on there, the majority of it has really stuck on there pretty nicely, including the panko uh, breadcrumbs. So, yeah. The fish, it's fish in and of itself cooks pretty quickly. And you don't have to use vegetable oil either. You can use canola oil, peanut oil, you know, any kind of oil that's good for deep frying. I just happen to have vegetable oil lying around, so and that works too. And that's what I used last night as well. And both my girlfriend and I, we had a blast with dinner. So it was a good fish dinner. Mm, fish dinner. All right, guys. Now we're gonna go and put them here on our paper towel. Ah, come here. I'm just gonna let them soak like that for a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the other uh, fish battered and toss them in here. Once all that's done, then we'll get to eating. Time for the white bass. More white bass. 
And something I forgot to do with the sunfish, guys. I apologize. I forgot to score it. Now, what I mean by score is that I meant that uh, you take a knife and you cut little holes and you cut little, um, I don't know if you guys see, I went ahead and did it. I took the knife and I went and I cut little slots right here on the side. <clears throat> that uh, that helps get all the, uh, the flavoring and the seasonings and stuff like that inside of it and it even helps cook it better too. All right guys, so there we have it. We have our catfish, these two right here. And then we have our white bass, you know, these four pieces of meat right there. And our green sunfish right there. Nice cooked and fried and ready to be eaten. So let's see how they taste. All right guys, let's get to eating our fish right now. But first, let's say a little prayer. Dear God, we want to thank you uh, for this delicious meal that uh, you've allowed us to uh, cook here for uh, today. And uh, we want to thank you for such a wonderful day that we had here at the, uh, out there at the lake, Lord. And thank you for providing us the opportunity of catching those fish, Lord. And uh, we will, uh, we ask that you please bless these fish um, as we uh, put them in our bodies, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's dig in. White bass. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. That is some good fish right there. Very tasty, very good. Nice flavor to it. Man, that is some good fish. All right, now try the catfish. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. You can definitely tell. Uh, you can definitely uh, taste a the difference there when uh, trying these two different fish here. Because uh, catfish, they're not as flaky as the white bass is. They have a bit more of like a meatier texture to it, I guess. I guess that's the way, best way to describe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Nice, white, well cooked, and just melts in your mouth. Mmm, yummy. Now finally, the green sunfish. One thing I like to do first, I like to bite the tails off. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It tastes just like bacon. Definitely give it a try if you guys haven't tried it. It's really tasty. Thin off, top thin. Look at that, just peels right off. Look at that. You can even eat the, you can eat the top thin too. Just like butter. See all that? All that's bone. Do the same on the bottom thin here. Peels right out. That means that thing is nice and cooked. Look at that. Let me get some napkins here. <laughs> Still some uh, some oil inside of it, some juices in there, but you know, that is nice and tasty. 
fatten into the green uh, sunfish. I'm sure there are people who can be like, you know, they have really small bones. Not really much of a big deal there. If you can, if you like it, go ahead and just chew right through the bones and just make sure you grind them up. Make sure you do that well because you don't want to get them stuck in your throat. But, huh? See that? One of the rib bones. You know, you can just, you know, just sit biting into it. You can just. Yeah. Peel it right off. Look at that. Peel that. Oh, that one. That's all the meat right there. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's some good fish right there. Imagine if I had like 10 of these or 20 of them, you know? Mm. Full smorgasbord. Let's try another white bass. Mm. Yummy. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, being here with me today. I really enjoyed uh, doing all this stuff for you guys and um, I really do look forward to doing more of this in future videos. Um, let me know in the comments down below, you know, what y'all thought of this video. If you have any kind of questions for me or comments or maybe even tips or stuff like that on uh, what I could do for future videos, go right ahead and put them right there in the comments down below. I um, really appreciate you guys joining me here today and again thanks again if you guys um, are um, were from the uh, from the previous video and uh, have followed me uh, to what I'm doing right now um, I know I'm still kind of a little shaky on my uh, beginning here but you know what I'm still going in strong I'm staying confident in all of this and um, I'm really hoping to uh, up upgrade um, the, con the type of content that I have here for y'all and I want to keep doing more of this you know but yeah thanks again guys for joining me today um, I hope y'all enjoyed it if you guys liked what you saw here go right ahead y'all know what to do hit that like button hit the subscribe button share the video with your friends family or colleagues or you know co-workers whoever you who if you know anybody who likes fishing you know just share them just send them this video you know um, and of course, you know, ring the little bell icon to be notified for future videos. Um, cause like I said, I am going to be making more of these. I love fishing. I love cooking the fish here. I proved to you guys, I showed y'all, I know how to cut, clean, cook, and consume the fish. You know, and that's, that's right there. That's basically what the, the four C's of fishing. That's what I call it. Yeah. You, you catch, clean, cook, consume, you know, it's yummy. It's awesome. It's fun. And it feels so rewarding. You know? get to do this with your own hands and guess what it barely didn't even cost me that much of a penny if anything because of the the park that I went to and I caught the catfish and the white bass I caught all this basically for ten dollars you know but if, uh, hopefully I can find myself a nice spot to where I don't have to pay ten dollars in um, that's what's gonna be the fun of uh, my content here is going back to that lake and trying out other spots Maybe I can find a better place to catch white bass or other catfish and show you guys You know you can have a nice wonderful meal like this, you know You can get like a meal like this at a, at a restaurant for what like 20 bucks, you know 20 30 bucks Basically free you know, if I didn't have to pay ten dollars at that park, I would have caught this basically all for free. You know, I did it all by myself. You guys can do it too, and I hope you guys do go out there. You have y'all selves an adventure, and y'all catch yourselves some nice, tasty fish. So, until next time, guys. Always remember, stay strong, stay confident. Love you guys, and as always, stay awesome, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care.